It was a wrap two days ago at a UN climate summit in Dubai, but the final communique that seems to suggest the beginning of the end for fossil fuels is not sitting well with oil producing countries, especially in Africa. Industry professionals and analysts are divided as to whether the COP28 was a success or a failure. While the $6 trillion climate financing money question sticks out like a sore thumb at the end of the summit. Let's uh, deal down uh, with some insights now as we bring on NJ Ayuk, the uh, executive chairman of the African Energy Chamber based in Johannesburg. Uh, good evening to you, Ayuk. Uh, it's good to see you. Welcome back from COP28. Let's hit the ground running. Summarize the outcome of the summit for me. It was a big victory for um, the oil and gas and the fossil fuel industry, contrary to what most people um, thought. We have to be very careful when we read what happened at COP. The words phase out fossil fuels never came out in any of the agreement. What we always wanted was a careful, steady, gradual reduction of, uh, of fossil fuels into more cleaner forms of energy. So we, we, we left out, yes, um, there is a transition. We've never um, denied that we don't want to see a transition. But big issues was also pledges of climate finance, which we still have to discuss and see what that really means. And also a pledge that some of the wealthy nations would decarbonize while recognizing Africa's path in that. I think that this COP came out with some really good initiatives, but the jury is still out and a lot is still left on the table. And we would have to see if words do match deeds that would become needs. Uh, in what other areas do you think the summit was a success for you, uh, NJ, uh, outside the, 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 the overarching umbrella of what was uh, the final draft was? Do you think climate change uh, uh, proponents get something there? Can we make the earth uh, much better? less warmer than, than we are currently, do, do you think? We, we got something substantial out of Dubai and we could say, yes, we've taken some steps forward. I think what we got is that we try to push the wealthy nations to say they need to decarbonize and, and they have made pledges to decarbonize. We think that is important, but we also have to take into consideration three billion people, Borsin, around the world use less electricity than an American refrigerator. That is something that we have to look at. So for Africa, and more specifically, we have to look at our energy poverty needs and our development needs. And we have to say those that have used fossil fuels to drive up development and become rich and wealthy, they, need, they should not be asking poor people, especially in this continent, to carry the burden and pay for that. They need to own up to their responsibility. So this, this, the wealthy nation started saying, we want to recognize our responsibility, but don't just recognize nice and apologize we need to see more action we need to see we don't, we don't promise us solar and wind we need to be able to develop and we need to even see how do we pay for this you know they're talking climate finance fine 600 six trillion dollars needed by 2030 to get for african countries to get to net zero how are we going to raise that money you know it's not happening because we have already we already behind since the, the previous the, the previous pledges of 100 billion dollars didn't pay a dime right now it's 1.4 trillion dollars if you've not paid 1.4 trillion where are you going to find six trillion so for africa we have to have an african strategy to look to look at that and deal with that ourselves you know, I always say Wakanda Forever is a good movie, but the Black Panther is not coming to save us this time. We're going to have to do this ourselves. But bigger than that, what I also felt at COP was that Africa still has to work on having a united voice when it comes to these negotiations. 54 different positions, having somebody from Zambia who doesn't understand Nigeria or Ghana or Egypt or Libya, the leading African negotiations was a big frustration because they were only interested in talking about their minerals, but they're not interested in seeing how natural gas has to pump and drive up our, our development. That is a frustration that you see. I think it's time for the African Union to step up and stop 
taking aid from Western countries that define and drive its policy. We are seeing that if we continue to take aid because we want to pay bureaucrats and African Union diplomats and their salaries, we will never have an African voice that truly repre um, represents what is good for our people. It's interesting about this six trillion dollar question. You talk about Africa's financing uh, this uh, transition to clean uh, energy. Show me the money, by the way. It doesn't look like we'll get six trillion dollars by any stretch of imagination between now and 2030. So, but what can we do? What can Africa yeah, achieve? Anybody who went and any African nation that voted and went for a COP28 deal thinking that. You you're going to get six trillion dollars in Africa by 2030. That is not that is not true. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. We're getting played again. I can bet you that that's not going to happen. But you know what? The death of the fossil fuel industry has been grossly exaggerated. The oil and gas industry in Africa is going to continue going strong we're going to sell our oil and natural gas in africa and outside africa to develop africa we need to turn that around but i tell you this this climate finance it's not coming the only thing you need to do if they're really interested with driving this climate finance you know what they need to do use that six trillion dollars you promising africans that we know would not come capture all the greenhouse gas emissions, capture the carbon emissions in the air that is your biggest worry so that we can produce that. So they have the technologies, they need to use, the, they need to use that money to capture, to clean up the mess in the air so we can produce our hydrocarbons and develop our people because all the promises we've had is never work. And don't forget, this is not the first time Africa has been promised aid by wealthy nations and not delivering, but even the aid narrative has never helped Africa. Whenever we come back as a continent and say, we are going to wait for the wealthy nations to come save us because we're incapable of saving ourselves, it speaks ill of us. It tells us that we are not personally responsible. We cannot build a continent. We should be looking at free market solutions. Free market is still the best path to prosperity. Cut taxes, cut red tapes, limited governments, individual liberty. That is what is going to drive Africa. Markets, 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 and drill, baby, drill. We need to be drilling now more than any time. We need to be giving out licenses more than any time because you know what? Right after this COP, the United States is still going to be producing 12.8 million barrels a day. They're going to be giving more licenses. Norway, two days after having this deal at COP, you know what? Norway is planning to give more licenses next month. African countries will be crazy to start saying we need to drop oil and gas because there, there's some, some benevolent um, um, wealthy nation told us that. That would be a catastrophe. Uh, interesting, but does the African Energy Chamber align with the APP opposition today, the African Petroleum Producers uh, Organization that stands against the facing out of fossil fuel? I'm sure you've read that letter written by the president of APP 2 the COP28. Absolutely. We don't only stand with them. We support them. We believe they are right on the money. It would be dangerous to face out fossil fuel. We don't, we don't believe in a radical a Western energy transition model that is going to really destroy us. The African Petroleum Producers Organization is on the money on this. Do not forget these fossil fuels and especially oil and natural gas has driven human flourishing. We need to be able to have cost-effective power generation, cost-effective product development. And also, it's not just about solar and wind. The African Petroleum Producers Organization realized that we need to deal with our plastics. We need to deal with, we, we, we need to deal with petrochemicals. We need to deal with food. We need to deal with a lot of things. So we can't just adopt a radical, extremely dangerous approach to this. I mean, it's amazing how Africa has become the voice of pragmatism when it comes to climate. And that is, that, that is credit to 
prosperous that we sometimes when you've taken the heat so much you get wiser than those who have been privileged so much but we are going to lead and i believe the african petroleum producers organization and thanks to his secretary general from nigeria dr omar farouk they're doing an amazing job in really driving the right narrative they are right on the money and we support them and we are also going to push them for drill baby drill so that we can get more licenses into these countries and we can get people drilling because that's what we need to be doing right now within this continent all right thank you so much i'm sure the cop 20 is just uh finished so this is the whole lots ahead to discuss and i'm sure you folks are the african energy chamber already preparing for the african energy week in uh cape town for 2024 you folks are uh, heading ahead of the curve already i'm sure a whole lot of conversations we'll be touching base with you uh, before the year runs out uh are you to see what the 2024 uh holds uh just ahead thank you so much executive chairman at the african energy uh chamber in johannesburg thank you for your time this evening on the show as always.